Hello, how are you doing? It's another beautiful day and I'm here. Today I want to speak about um, rather also a very controversial topic which uh, most people really misunderstand salvation. And today I want to uh, speak about the various things on how people mean this, misunderstand salvation and they end up, uh, you know, believing in something different than what God already ordained. And that's what I'll be speaking today. Uh, and as I start, I'm going to start uh, from the book of um, Mark 4.12. Mark 4.12. That's exactly where I'm going to start today's uh, Bible study. And if you have not joined us before, uh, I always do this every day. You can check on my uh, Facebook and YouTube. That is a Keith Mwoki on YouTube and uh, also on Facebook. I always post this every day. And uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you. Uh, Mark 4.12. Mark 4 verse 12. The Bible says uh, something here. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So the Bible tells us very well, there are so many people who... Who, uh, who do what? There are so many people that who see, but they don't perceive. And they also hear, uh, they may hear, but they don't understand. Why is understanding a very important thing in salvation? Because if you don't understand, you cannot be able to be saved. Salvation has to come with something called understanding. Understanding, for you to be saved, you have to understand the gospel. Many people just think uh, just because I, I, I have heard about Jesus being spoken about, then I am saved. No, you have to come to the understanding of the knowledge of the gospel and you don't understand anything else. You only understand the gospel. All right. So if you don't understand the gospel, then how will you be saved? How will you believe in something that you don't understand? You may know, but you don't understand. So understanding is very, very important. And uh, we also see that those are the words of Jesus. We also see um, Apostle Paul also quoting the same, uh, the same verse in Acts 28. We've seen... Uh, Paul also quoting the same in Acts 28. He was, he was actually trying to insist and say, this is an action which many, many, many people do. They always think that uh, just by talking or mentioning about Jesus, they are saved. But he says they have to understand. You have ears, but you don't hear very well. You, you will hear, but you will not understand. You have heard the truth, but did you really understand? All right. Did you really understand the word of God? Acts 28, 26 uh, to 28, the Bible says, saying, go unto these people and say, hearing you shall hear and shall not understand. You see, Paul is also repeating the same thing. And seeing that you see and not perceive, for the heart of these people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull and hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and should be converted, and I should heal them. All right? So he's also quoting the words of Jesus Christ and talking about the same and saying, most of these guys just hear, but they don't understand. So understanding is very, 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 very important for you to be able to be saved. So if you don't hear the gospel and understand, you cannot be saved. All right. Let's go to Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13 is another uh, very important uh, uh, Bible verse that I always like so, so much. Ephesians 1.13. And uh, the Bible has told us something um, here. Let's just uh, check it out. Ephesians uh, 1.13. In whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also you, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Once you hear the word of truth and you trust it, you are sealed. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So, uh, just pardon my drawing. This is a, let's assume this is a human being. And uh, these are the legs. You know, it looks a bit weird. But uh, this is you. We have three parts. We have the body. We have the body. We have uh, something else here inside you. 
inside you, which is called the soul. The soul is just exactly the way you are, but it's inside you. We have the soul, all right, and then we have the spirit, all right? We have the body, soul, and spirit. So once you believe, the Holy Spirit comes inside you. Now, let me tell you something. Before you believe, you're already, you have a dead. Your spirit is dead. You know, when Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, the spirit died, sorry. The spirit died. And when the spirit died, it meant that now, you see, the Bible tells us in, uh, in Genesis, let's, let's just go there so that I can be able to explain to you much more easier. In the book of Genesis, uh, uh, ch chapter 1 verse 26 the bible says and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fall of the air and and so forth so he said let us make man in our image the image that god was talking about is the body soul and spirit but now when man sins the spirit died all right so when the spirit died now this was supposed to be Three out of three parts we were supposed to have the body, soul, and spirit. But when man sinned, one part died. So it became two out of three parts. Two out of three. The spirit died. So when the spirit dies, the spirit controls a lot of things. It controls the soul and also the body. When the spirit died, it meant that after you... After some time, because the, the soul is always immortal, and also the body was immortal, it will reach a time that the body will die. And when the, die, the body dies, the soul will go straight to hell because the spirit is dead if you have not received salvation. Because the spirit affects both the body and the soul. But uh, what happens? Let, let, let's just check here. Two out of three, two out of three parts. You know, the Bible has always talked about uh, the number of man. Now, if you divide two out of three, what do you get? Point six, six, and six, all right? So point six, six, six is the number of man. The, 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 the person who is not saved has a point six, six, six. Have you ever heard in the book of Revelation 13 where, where God talks about the number of man, the number of the beast, the man will be six, six, and six. Why? Because this is the unsaved man. But now what happens? You know... Even before I go there, so many people have been wondering, are we really created in the image of God? Yes, Adam was created in the image of God. But us, if you're not born again, if you're just born of a woman and you're not born again, you're in the image of Adam. You're not in the image of God. Until you get born again is when you'll be in the image of God. Let me show you Genesis 5.3. Genesis 5.3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. Why is the Bible saying his likeness and after his image and called his name Seth? Because it was the image of sin. So everybody who is born right now is born in the image of Adam. All right? Adam. And until... You come to the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the only time that you can be able to regain your spirit. So when you're saved, back to Ephesians 1.13, when you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes alive in you. He comes alive. So the Spirit of God gets filled in here. I'm a very poor artist. Um, hmm. So the Holy Spirit comes in here. And now... You have the Holy Spirit of God inside you. Okay? So now this Holy Spirit cannot sin. This Holy Spirit cannot sin, but your body can sin. We are told that we should walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Why? Because the, the Spirit of God cannot sin, cannot go to hell. So the moment you're saved, you, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And you're, you're sealed till when? The Bible tells us you're sealed until when? You know, the Bible does not tell you you're sealed until the day you sin. No. I'm not advocating for sin, but for those people who tell you that you can lose your salvation, they are lying to you because the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who rose Jesus Christ is inside you until a certain time. Ephesians uh, 4 verse 30, the Bible says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So when will you re be redeemed? The day of the redemption is the day of the rapture, all right? The day of the rapture, that is the day you will be redeemed. 
So what will be redeemed? This sinful body will be redeemed. That's the day that you're sealed up to that day. Okay? And until you come to the cross of Christ, you cannot be able to get the Holy Spirit. So when you get the Holy Spirit inside you, the, the Spirit is no longer dead, but now the Spirit comes alive in you. That's why the Bible says, for you to be saved, you must be born again. Both You must be born of water. You must be born of water and spirit. All right? The Bible says, to be born again, you must be born of water and spirit. What's being born of water? When a woman gives birth, the water breaks. And when, the, when you're saved, the spirit is born again. The spirit gets born. It comes alive. And then Jesus dwells inside you. So it's very important to understand that. And if you don't understand that fact, you'll be running after salvation, which you don't understand. And understanding is a key fact. Uh, to knowing the gospel, all right? So believing is from the heart, not from the mind. There are those people who think that, uh, you know, I believe from the mind or I believe where. No, you have to believe from the heart. Believing from the heart. Believing is from the heart. Now, I want us to, first I tell you about how people perceive salvation. And then I also show you what exactly people, you know, mix up themselves you know, you think you're believing this, but you're believing a totally different thing. You're not believing the gospel. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.18, 1 Corinthians 1.18, uh, 1 uh, verse 18, it tells us something about several people who always believe something different. First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18, the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. So the Bible tells us, to those who are perishing, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. Why is the preaching of the cross foolishness to those who are perishing? You see, there are so many people who think that they are saved by several things, that the things that they do are the ones which save them. And you forget that Jesus already gave us the cross. He gave us the cross. He told us, this is the only way you can come to me, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So without the blood, there's no shedding. There's no remission of sins. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. But you see, so many people, it's like they say, no, 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 don't, don't, don't look at the cross. Just do this, do that, do that, do that, you know. Give here, do there, you know, go here, get in. You know, there are so many people. I even see other cults. They are trying to t When you look at Facebook, you just get amazed and you ask, what's really happening to people? People are so much deceived. So many things. Just go on my Facebook, my Facebook account for those who follow me. And just see, just scroll down from my page and you'll be able to see so many things that I always post there. People just doing weird things. Hmm? People doing weird things. This one is believing that. This one is believing that. That pastor is doing this. You see, and you wonder. It's because people have gotten, uh, it's like they are blind to the cross. They don't want to hear about the cross. They rather do something to earn salvation. And there's nothing that you can do to earn your salvation. Verse 19. Verse 19 says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So if you think that you'll go to Jesus Christ because of your own wisdom, wisdom, those people who, you know, I am good, I am good, I have done this, I've done this. Uh, nah, your wisdom, your wisdom is like foolishness to God. So there's no way, there's no way you can be able to be saved by using your own wisdom. All right, 1 Corinthians 1.20, let's, let's go down there and we see 1.20, 20 20 21. The Bible says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? You see, the wisdom of this world is foolishness. Hmm? Wisdom. This one is foolishness. When you see somebody trying to complicate the gospel, there are so many churches that you go right now and you, and you listen to the preacher preaching and you're like, this thing is too complicated, you know. I, I've been to so many churches, though, 
I was raised in uh, I was raised in church, uh, you know, uh, Sunday school. Osler's acting. Mary and Joseph went, uh, you know, teens classes. Everything, and until I was, until so many years later, is when I was able to understand what the gospel is. Because most of the people sit down and they keep on thinking that it's because of something that I did because, you know, I was raised in church. My mom is from church. You know, my dad goes to church. That's how I'm saved. And they forget the cross. And you keep on thinking it's because I did something. You know, I say that prayer when I was eight years. I say that prayer when I was 16 years. And you think that's what saves you? I think that's the worst mistake you can ever do to yourself because that day when Jesus, when you stand at the gate of heaven, Jesus will ask you one thing. Why do you think, uh, why, why should I let you in heaven? And you'll start saying, you know, uh, I, I think I used to go to church. You know, I used to cast out demons. I used to do this and this. You know, there'll be even pastors who will be standing there and they are asked, why do you want me to get uh, to, to allow you in, in heaven? And they'll be giving their stories. You know, I cast out demons. I did this. And the Bible tells us very well. That day, there are so many people who will be told, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Why? Because you did not believe the gospel. You believed in something that you do. You believed in something different and you misunderstood salvation. You did not understand salvation. And the only reason why people don't understand salvation is because they are so proud to even ask. They are so proud to go and ask, what is salvation? What, what is the gospel? How can I learn about the gospel? Right now, if I ask you, what is the gospel? Where do we find the gospel? Many people don't even know. I'll be speaking about that in just a little while. I'll tell you exactly what is the gospel. I always make sure that I tell people that because that's the only thing which can get you out of problems. All right. And uh, verse 21, verse 21, 1 Corinthians 1, 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So until you become like a child, you become as foolish as a child, as, as, as believing as a child. You see, the Bible says there are those people who seem out, but those are, they may be the first, first people who you might see in heaven. Who, like for example... I, I don't know how I can explain. The Bible gave us actually, Jesus explained using the example of children. Until you have that confidence, that trust of a child, you cannot see the kingdom of God. When you come to God with uh, what I know, I know this, I know philosophy, this, you'll be like the Pharisees. There's no way you'll be going. You have to believe. You have to believe the gospel. You have to believe the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. Ephesians uh, 118. Ephesians 118. 118 uh, uh, to 19. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may uh, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his, of his glory inheritance uh, in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power uh, to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So the Bible tells us understanding is key. You have to understand. You have to understand. Understand. And I always try to, ins to, to insist on this word, understanding the gospel, because if you don't understand the gospel, you'll be pushing wind. You'll be chasing wind. You'll be running up and down and you don't really understand what is happening. You'll just be saying, I go to church every day. Uh, I do this, I do this, I do this. And at the end of the day, you're not understanding. Let's go to Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, uh, 16. The Bible says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You're not ashamed of the gospel the gospel is what? The power. The gospel, it is the power of God unto salvation. So gospel, gospel is the power of God unto what? Salvation. So you're saved by the gospel. You're not saved by something else. You're not saved by something else. You're saved by the gospel. And you have to understand that very, 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 very well. All right? Uh Let's see also in uh, Acts 16.31. Acts 
at 16:31 This is Peter being asked so what must we do to be saved all right what must i do to be saved and he said believe on the lord jesus christ you and and uh, you shall be saved you and your house believe believe believing let me write that one here believing you know believing literally means faith having faith you must have faith you're not saved by something that you do you're not saved by doing something this is not a gospel of doing not a gospel of works it is a gospel of believing hmm? and the bible told us very well in hebrews 11:6 without faith it is impossible to please god so without this faith without believing it is impossible to please god it is impossible to be able to enter the throne of god you cannot be able to enter heaven without believing god wants you to believe it's for those people who keep on saying ah you know maybe i'm saved maybe i'm not maybe is because you don't believe if if you don't believe in the rapture let me tell you something if you don't believe in the rapture and you say i don't care if the rapture is there or not if you don't believe in it you'll be left behind why because it is our blessed hope if you don't believe in christ if you don't believe in the gospel you say yeah you know it's a gospel fine i can i can just put my mind there but i'm not really believing 100% if there's something called gospel you'll be left behind it's all about believing the gospel you've been given you've been told receive it by faith by faith receive the gospel and you're there every day you're begging people and telling them oh please you know god please come into my heart how will he come to your heart and he has already told you this is it pick it it's like maybe i'm standing like this with this felt pen and i'm telling you pick it and then you keep on telling me please give it to me but i've told you pick do you want me to put it in your mouth or maybe put it in your hand no god always stays like this it is a free gift he has given unto you it is a free gift get it receive it just pick all right you pick it by what by faith but for those people who keep on saying you know i have to ask god please jesus come into my heart jesus please save me jesus do He's just wondering, but I already gave you instructions. What what else do you want me to say? I already told you where you can pick it, all right? All right. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4:10. 1 Timothy uh 4:10. 1 Timothy 4:10. For the for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially those that believe Again the word believe those that believe if you don't believe then you're off the track believing is key okay believing is key you have to believe hmm? have you ever heard about the imputed righteousness imputed righteousness is whereby Christ gives you his own righteousness through believing so he imputes his own righteousness into you through believing but many people don't want to believe in Jesus Christ so you you're not righteous you can't go to God with your own righteousness your righteousness cannot take you even one inch near God but we are Jesus imputes righteousness into us when God looks at us down here he looks and he says oh that's Keith okay yeah yeah that's Jesus on on him so yeah that's my child but if it is me to check me and see my you know he will just say no that's a filthy sinner but because of jesus imputing his righteousness on us we become clean and the only way he can impute his righteousness is by believing we have to believe in him we have to believe in what he did this is the blood which gives us that righteousness this one this is the blood there's no way you can go to jesus christ without the the blood all through the history of humankind there's always blood 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 left right and center there was always romans 4 424 let me show you about the imputed righteousness romans 424 but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised jesus our lord from the dead if we believe if we believe you see believing is a very heavy word believing you shall have the imputed righteousness all right let's see romans 322 Romans 
even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all upon them that believe, there is no difference. Those that believe, believing is a key word. This, without faith, it is impossible to get even closer to God. Faith is the main key, is the main key ingredient to pleasing God. You have to have faith. Believing is everything, all right? And you see, there are so many people who think I can be justified by doing something. I was, I was watching a movie about the Pilgrim's Progress just minutes ago. We used to call it Msafiri back in the days. And uh, I remember this guy, after he knew sin, you know, the only way for you to be able to know what sin is, is by reading the Bible. So this guy reads the Bible and then he's like, wow. God is going to judge this place. He's going to judge this world. And then he says, now, since I've understood God is going to judge, then I have to go and find salvation. And immediately you know what sin is. A burden comes in your, in your back. You're carrying a burden. You want to know, how can I be able to rescue myself from this? And he goes all the way and he finds a lot of tribulations and troubles and... and uh, one of the places that I saw which got me so interested is that he goes and asks some people, you know, those religious leaders, excuse me, how can I be able to get off this load of sin from my back? And then they tell him, you see, you have to follow the law. Then they show, he, they show him, now you have to climb that mountain of following the law. Do you know there are 613, 613 laws? or commandments in the Bible. You know, people only think about the Ten Commandments. There are 613 commandments that God has given in the first five books of the Bible. How are you going to fulfill 613 commandments? How? Others are saying, don't shave your head on the side. Don't shave your beard like this. Don't do this. Don't walk there. Don't eat this kind of food. Don't do... There are so many things which are... And if you think you're going to get to heaven by fulfilling all these things, maybe, you know, the other law saying, don't worship on another day, worship on the Sabbath, like this seventh day, guys. Guys, you're following the law. And the Bible tells us the law is a curse. The law is a curse. And Jesus became a curse for us. He became the curse for us so that we may not follow the law. Christ is the end of the law to those who believe. So why should you follow the law? Why should you follow the law? You cannot be justified by the law. Let's go to Galatians 2.16. Galatians 2.16. Let me show you. All right. Galatians 2.16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By doing all these things, you can never be justified. Just check the cross. Check the cross. Forget about the laws. The laws will take you to a very high and confused manner. Some of the laws are those things that people always are impu Like, okay, I know, I know this one will always make pastors mad. But for me, I don't care. What I care is speak speaking the truth. There are so many pastors right now. If you ask them, uh, should you do this and this? They tell you, no, no, we are not under the law. We are not under the law. Fine. Cool. That is true. But then why are you still preaching 10% tithe? 10% tithe. Is this not the law? Does it mean that God, uh, Jesus, uh, he, 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 he took off all the other laws, but he left the 10% tithes? All right. You see, there's a pastor I used to, every day when I'm working, I, I'm not employed. I work my, I'm an entrepreneur. So what I do, every day when I make money, I was always rushing to the MPESA to go and send this guy 10%. Every day, every day, every day sending him. And I was always thinking, oh, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do something wrong. I don't want to uh, refuse to give my 10% because maybe that is what God might use to help me enter heaven. You see, I believe that giving 10% to this pastor, I'm going to win myself uh, eternal life. And I used to think, oh, 10%. And then now, even during Sunday service, he's always, come here, pay your tithe, pay. If you don't, can a man rob God? Come on, that is, 
This, this, are, this is the law. This is the law. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And he did not say give it to the, uh, to the pastor. Tithe was to be given to the Levites. So now if I have to give 10% tithe, then I have to go to Israel and go and look for one of the Levites and give them 10%. Because what is the work of the tithe? The tithe was supposed to be money which is, which is to be given to the widows, to the poor people, and to the people who have no money, food, and all that. But nowadays, this tithe is enriching these fellas. And all they need is give me, give me, give me, give me money. And they try to make you feel so guilty because you've, it's like they're telling you do some faith plus some work. All right? Do something. There's something that you have to do. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. Let me tell you, that's a pure lie. Pure lie. Let them, let them keep you on the law. The law cannot save you. You can't be saved by giving 10%. No. God loves a cheerful giver. And he did not say, give it to the pastor. If the pastor is, is, is in need, give him. Fine. Well, good. Give to the poor widow. Give to uh, a stranger. Give to who? Give to who? Give. Even these pastors, when you go to their churches and tell them, hey, I have no house rent. Please help me. You see, we always give and God said, they will chase you like a dog. So be wise. Be wise unto salvation. Salvation is a free gift. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay anything. Give, help, fine. The church is not a building. The church is a congregation of people. So for those who tell you, you see, we, we, we have so many bills for the church, it's fine. You can give willingly, but you're not giving out of a command. It's not a command. You give cheerfully. You can even give 100%, 100 out of 100% because you want to give cheerfully. But you're not commanded some percentages. That's a lie from hell. You're not justified by the law. So it is faith in the blood. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9.22, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And all through the Bible, blood was always used. All through the Bible. Let me show you something here. All through the Bible, there was always blood shed. All through in the Bible. The first point we see blood being shed is the time of Adam. All right? When Adam sinned, what happened? God himself, he, he found them in the garden and asked them, hey, why are you hiding? They said, oh, we know we are naked. So God killed an animal and clothed them with the skin. So the first blood which was shed actually was shed by God. And he showed them, hey, this is the remedy for sin. God, hmm? God himself, he shed blood. And then he told these guys, now I'm going to clothe you. And after that, we see also Ad, uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, they went to, this is Cain and Abel. We see them doing some sacrifice also. Now, what happened is that Abel went and gave, uh, I'm very poor in drawing. Yeah? He went and slew um, let me draw this. Is like uh, this. Let's assume this is an altar, and this other fella here. This other fella here. This is Cain. Cain he gave some some watermelons. <laughs> this is a watermelon. This is a this is a, maybe pineapple. These are some bananas. You know, some bananas and things like that. But what happened with Abel? Abel slew. He slew uh, an animal and sacrificed to God. When he sacrificed to God, God accepted Abel's sacrifice. But why did God not accept Cain's, Abel, uh, Cain's sacrifice? Because Cain did one thing. Instead of coming to God th using blood, he came to God using his works. All right? Hey, God, these are my works. These are my watermelon. These are the things that I do. Jesus, this is, this is the money that I've made. This is, you know, this is my righteousness. These are the things that I've done. You see how good I am? He gave what is not supposed to be given. And the only way you can go to God is by blood. The Bible says in Leviticus that the life of flesh is in the blood. 
And I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. So whoever sins, whoever is in problem, make sure that you go through the blood. We see also, uh, we, we see also uh, Abraham. Abraham, we see uh, Isaac, we see Moses, we see so many people in the Bible, they were always coming to God using the blood, going to sacrifice. Until it reached a point now, God said, no, 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 no. I think these guys, all these things, they cannot be able to do any uh, good. You cannot be able to get salvation using all these things. Now, let me just do the main ultimate sacrifice and bring Jesus himself. Jesus came as the lamb. All right. Jesus, oh, writing in my own styles, eh? the lamb of God. Jesus is the lamb of God. So he had to die. He had to shed his blood so that the same thing can also happen. There had to be shedding of blood so that there could be forgiveness of sin. All right. Romans 3.25, the Bible says, In whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood for the remission of sins. Propitiation. Jesus became... Propitiation is, is the act of... Uh, uh, you, you know, propitiation, the act of appeasing wrath. We can call it substituting or the sacrifice for sin. So you trust in this blood and you're saved. You don't trust in this blood. You trust in your watermelons and the apples and the things and the wax and the good things that you do. Then you don't receive salvation. Simple and clear. So there was always blood shed all through the history. And that is what was able to make people be justified. I, I want to tell you, we are justified by three things. Justified by? We are justified by three things. Number one, we are justified by grace. We are justified by grace. Romans 3.24. Romans 3.24. We are justified by grace. 3.24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. All right. So this is the grace, the grace of God. Romans uh, this is uh, Romans 3.24. Sorry, Romans 3.24. This is the grace of God. We are justified by the grace of God. Number two, we are also justified by faith. We are justified by faith. Romans 3.28. 3. 28. Three 28, all right? Romans 3, 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified, is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You're justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Faith in what? This is faith in, faith in the blood of Jesus. So this is our faith, all right? Our faith justifies us. The faith that we do, we give to the blood of Jesus Christ, justifies us, okay? And also we are justified by the blood. All right? This is um, Romans 5, 9. 5, 9. We are justified by the blood. That is Jesus' blood. All right, let me read for you Romans 5, 9. Much more than now, uh, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So you are justified by the blood, by the blood of Jesus Christ. So justified literally means we, it's as if we just, if I had not sinned, just if I had not sinned. So when you're justified, it's as if you have not done any sin. It's as if you did nothing. It's as if you're holy. You are, you are covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed on you. So you become as if you've never even done any sin. All right? So salvation is by receiving. It's by receiving. You have to receive the salvation. So we always say that we joy in God. God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have received the atonement 
Romans 5.11, let me read it for you. Romans 5.11. And not only, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We have received the atonement through this. This is the atonement. This is the atonement that you have received. All right? So we, we are always redeemed by trusting the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, the Bible tells us very well, let's go to 1 Peter 1.18. The Bible tells us very well that uh, there is nothing else which can redeem you. For those people who think, maybe I'm redeemed by something else. Maybe I can do this or do this or do this. No, you're not redeemed by anything else. Redeem. All right. You're redeemed by what? Let's see what redeems you. 1 Peter 1.18.19. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. You see, those people tell you, bring this, bring this, you know. You, it's like, I've seen this one in so many churches whereby you find, you go to a church and as long as you give a lot of uh, offering and tithes and maybe you, 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 you give a lot of money in church, you get the front seats. The next day you're at elder of the church. The next day you're the assistant pastor just because you give money. And it's like you're getting in the ranks and you're becoming, you know, I am this self-righteous person because I give. You see, you're thinking that because I am made, you know, a high guy because I'm the only one with a car in our church or maybe you're the only one with a good job and you think you will be able to redeem yourself by silver and gold? You're lying to yourself. All right? Let's, let's see. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers. These are just men's traditions telling you, give, 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 give your things, your things. These are the works. These are the things Cain was giving, his own works. Instead of coming to Christ from the, uh, with, with blood, he came with his own things, all right? Verse, let's check also verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot. This is what redeems you. It's not your own works. It's not your money. It's not what you do. It's not how many times you call maybe the pastor. It's not how many times that you try to do things to try and justify yourself. No. Jesus tells you, come the way you are. Don't, don't add. There's nothing you can add to this and gain salvation. Nothing. Nothing. 100%. There's not even one thing that you can add to salvation. All right? You can't add anything. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, uh, verse 7. The Bible tells us, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have what? Redemption through his blood. This blood redeems us. We have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what redeems us. And we are forgiven our sins by this blood. This blood. I'm still explaining to those people who really, really misunderstand salvation. And they keep on thinking that I have redemption because of something else. No, I'm not redeemed by anything else. The gospel is the blood atonement of Christ. The whole gospel. The whole aspect of go the gospel. What is the gospel? The whole story about this blood. This is what we call the gospel. We preach Christ crucified. We don't preach another thing. We preach this Jesus who was crucified. This blood which was shed. I always say one thing. If Jesus could have died out of a heart attack. Or could have died out of uh, drowning or in water. Or have died uh, by somebody choking him or something like that. Then there could be no salvation. Why? Because there could be no blood. The blood of Jesus is very precious. This is the blood which forgave us our sins. Without this blood. Those people will tell you, say anything, do anything else, but the blood of Jesus Christ, they want you damned in hell. They want you going to hell. Or even, probably, even themselves, they don't even know. There are so many people who don't even know the gospel. It took me years and years, over 30 years by the time I realized it's not by the things that I do in church which are saving me. It's not by these things that I think they are good that is saving me. It is by the finished work of the cross. This work, 
It's the only thing which could have saved me. I could not be able to be saved. I, I went to church. I, I prayed to people. I did this. I did that. You know. And every day I'm thinking, did I do enough? Did I do enough? Every day in my bed, on my bed, I'm, I'm, I'm praying. I'm saying, God, please, when you come, just scare me to make sure that I've repented again and again. Or maybe I do something. God, please remember. But God was just looking and saying, have you trusted the gospel? Have you trusted the gospel? And I was always thinking, no, Jesus, please come into my heart. Do, please, Jesus, what can I do? What can I do? Tell me what, where do I, can I lift a hole? Can I do this? Can I, Jesus does not want you to do anything. He just tells you, believe, believe. There's no one verse in the Bible which says, and this person was led to Christ by or, or, using this prayer. No, you have to believe and you have to believe something that you understand. The only way you can come to Christ is by understanding the gospel. When you understand, automatically it comes to your heart. That's the only way you can be able to understand. Understanding is very important so that you can be able to. You see, you're not redeemed by other things. And even all these people who try to uh, tell you, you know, follow the law, follow the law, do all this. Jesus came and with Jesus only, that's the only way. That you can be able to go to heaven. Following the Lord, doing all these things cannot help you in anything. Let's check Hebrews 9, 12 to 14. Hebrews 9, 12 to 14. Hebrews 9, um, 12 to 14. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once. Once. He did not enter twice or thrice. Once. He entered once. Into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes of an heifer, sprinkling and unclean, sanctify the, uh, the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? He has to purge your conscience from dead works. These are dead works. These are things that you think because my farm had a lot of money, because I made money in my Mpesa, because I made money in this and that, because I made money from shady deals, corruption, and all those kind. You see, there are people who every day they are corrupt. Corruption, of course, makes other people die because of hunger and other people do this and that. And at the end of the day, you come with a million shillings or 500,000 or 10,000 and you say, oh, pastor, I'm so good. I'm giving you this money so that you can, you know, you can see how good I am. And probably I can be able to enter heaven because of my things, my things, the things that I do. No, the only way you can enter Heaven is through the blood of Christ. All these other things, even if you give a billion shillings per day, you can never enter heaven. That's the only way. That's the only way. Hebrews 10, 10 to 12. Hebrews 10, 10. 10, 10 to 12. Hebrews 10, 10 to 12. By, by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of, uh, body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily. This one is especially for Catholics. Huh? And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. What happens in Catholic churches? Every day they are there ministering, giving the same sacrifices, giving the same uh, sacraments which can never take away sins. The same confession. You go, drink, have fun, do all the things that you could be able to do lie and steal and do all those things with the priests and then Sunday morning you're there in that window trying to confess to the same guy that you are robbing people to together and now you think this robber is going to forgive your sins huh? this guy is going to forgive your sins and he is also a, 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 a weird person just the same way you are how will a man forgive your sins how will getting a sacrament you see Catholics they believe that the time you get that sacrament is like you're putting Jesus inside. You, you, you're push, putting Jesus in that small thing. Huh? And I get it here. Same sacrifices which cannot, cannot forgive sins. Come out from those people. Come out from those religions. Believe the Bible. I always say I'm not after any religion. I'm not after Catholic. I'm not after 
Protestants. I'm not after uh, Pentecostals. All the, all the religions, they are nothing unless you believe the gospel. You can, why do we have so many religions? We have Protestants, we have this, we have Deliverance Church, we have uh, this, we have a full gospel, we have ABC, we have, why do we have all those? Because all the people differ. They differ in the understanding of the Bible. And every person has his own doctrines. The Protestants, they have their own doctrines. The Pentecostals have their own doctrine. The Calvinists, they have their own doctrine. The Catholics, they have their own doctrine. ABC, they have. Why? Is, is God the author of confusion? No. Because these guys, they want to teach something which is not of the Bible. When the Bible says, believe. Believe and you will be saved. They are saying, no, 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 no. You don't have to believe alone. You have to do something else. Are you going to listen to the Bible? Or are you going to listen to the traditions of men? These guys, all they want is that you may be lost with them. And even probably, they also went to Bible colleges, which are all after the traditions of men. You see, if you go to a Bible college, you will find there is a Bible college for the guys of ABC Church. Uh, there are Bible college for the Protestants. There's a Bible college for Catholics. There's a Bible. You see, these guys, what they will do is that first they will teach you their traditions. And then now they teach you the Bible according to their traditions. That's why it's very good you believe in the Bible and forget all these other uh, religions. Religions will not take you anywhere. It is only the word of God, which is light unto salvation. All right? Uh Let's see, let's see Hebrews uh, 10, 14, 10, 14. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. One offering, one only. Let's see verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter unto the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. So how do you enter? By the blood of Jesus Christ. This one, you can enter the holy of the holiest. When you see somebody, a pastor telling you, the only way to get to Jesus, I saw the other uh, pastor of helicopter ministries. He was telling people, hey, you give me, I don't know, it was 10,000 or what. I, I, I confirm if your name is in the book of life. What stupidity is that? It's because people don't know that there is only one mediator between man and God who is Jesus Christ. You believe in some guy, you give your 10,000 shillings, you're, you've not even paid rent because some guy wants to confirm if your name is in the book of life. That's lies. That's lies. So many people, so many people are lied to. They sell to you fake miracles. They sell to you all those things. Because of what? You're ignorant. You're igno I've, I've been in that ignorance for over 30 years. I've been thinking these fellas can, it's like, you know, I remember the first time I was told to come and, uh, you know, uh, come to this meeting. You know, we will be, there'll be the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And then I go there and then some guy is trying to teach people how to speak in tongues. He's saying, no, just start, start doing this. You're like, how do you teach somebody the gifts of the Holy Spirit? How do you teach somebody? Start doing like this. How? How? C can you teach the Holy Spirit? Can you? And then you see people falling down and then the others are crying and do, they are doing some things which are really weird. And I'm, I'm there. I've, yes, I've fallen down, but I've just been pushed by people. And then I'm asking myself, now, should I start crying or what should I do? I, I really got confused with these religions. They really confused me until I knew salvation is all about the blood of Jesus Christ. Not all this drama and all these things that the people do and they think that they are saved. No, I'm not after any, against anyone. I'm only against false doctrines because I've been there. I know. I know. And until the day I opened the Bible by myself and I listened, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not hearing some guy telling you his own story, which he was talking with his wife, maybe at home. And I decided, okay, let me use it as a sermon. No. Don't listen to those guys. Listen to the word of God. And we are living in apostasy, the time of the end. When people shall be confused, as much confused as possible, sound doctrine will go. People who really talked about Jesus Christ will be talking about money. Give me this. It's all about power, 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 power. Give me this. Give me that. Give me this. Give me that. I am better than so and so. I am better than so and so. No. 
No, it's about the blood of Jesus Christ. There's nothing else which can change you. There's nothing else which can help you. There's no other thing that you can be able to do to save yourself. No matter how many Rolls Royce you go with, no matter how many Range Rovers you walk with, if you have not come to Christ through the cross, you're going to hell with your Range Rovers and your Rolls Royce and everything and all the things that you have. It's very important to understand the, the, the gospel, the gospel, the power of God. You see, so many people tremble on the blood of Jesus Christ. What do I mean by trembling on the blood? It's like, you see, the blood of Jesus is, no, is of no use. The blood of Jesus, you see, uh, nah, nah. You see, uh, you can't really just go straight to Jesus Christ through the blood. No. So many people just tremble on the blood of Jesus Christ. They keep on saying, ah, it's, it's of no effect. No, don't, don't look at the blood. Don't look at the blood of Jesus Christ. No, it's not the main thing. You have to do this, do this. Let's see Hebrews 10, 29, 30. Hebrews 10, 29, 30. What does the Bible say here? Of how much sore punishment suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith was sanctified an unholy, un, unholy thing and has done despite and to the spirit of grace. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. You know, vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Uh, where am I? Be belongs unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. For those people who keep on telling people that the blood of Jesus is not of no use. Just do this. Just give to our church. Just give this. Do this. Do th all those kind of things. And they don't tell you what the gospel is. I was in church. I, I, I will repeat this over and over again. I was in church for over 30 years. 30 years, my friend. 30 years. And not even one day did I ever hear somebody really talk about the gospel. Exclusively explaining what the gospel is. I always thought gospel, the, 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 all these things about salvation are really complicated. It's really complicated. Like it, it looked like rocket science. I was so much confused. I really misunderstood the gospel. I was confused. And I thought, ah, this thing is really confusing. Hmm? Until that day that I took the Bible by myself and read it by myself, I got to be able to understand. And I found other like-minded Christians who also understand the same way. And that, that was the beginning of my salvation. And this thing really bothered me so much until I said, if this is how things are like, uh, it's, it's really so bad. It's really very, very bad. Because people are going to hell. People are really going to hell. Because of thinking that they are doing something, it's really so much bad. Hmm? Salvation is a free gift. I always tell people, salvation is a free gift. You have to do nothing. These are misunderstandings. All these misunderstandings of the gospel. Do this, do that. Salvation is a free gift. Actually, it has been spoken so many times in the Bible that it's free. You don't have to pay even a dime. Let's, let's check Romans 5.15. Romans 5.15. Romans 5.15. I want to show you how many times the Bible says, Salvation is a free gift. 5.15 to 18. Hmm? But, not, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many are dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. All right? Let's see, 16. And not as, and, and, and not as it was by... Uh, by one that sinneth, so is the gift, gift again, for the judgment was by uh, one unto condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Free gift, we are told, is a gift. 17, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Verse 18, therefore by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So if it's free, why are you selling it? 
free. If I tell you I'm giving you a free gift right now of uh, 20,000 shillings or 50,000 or a million shillings, and I tell you, hey, the gift is there at the door, pick it whenever you want. And then you keep on telling me, oh, I've not paid my rent. You see, this has happened. Please help me. Please give me. I'll just be looking at you and tell you. I already told you where I kept the free gift. Why are you disturbing me? Why are you, why are you calling all these phone calls telling me, please help me, please help me? I told you, go pick your... Just agree. Go and sign. It's like somebody who has taken a mortgage and is about the house is supposed to be uh, about to be taken because he has not paid the mortgage for a long time. And then somebody just, you know, he, he writes a check and he says, have the check at the bank. Just go and sign it and agree that you have accepted it. And then you keep on saying, no, you see, please give me, please give me the check, please give me. The one who's paid for you will just wonder and ask you, why are you not just going to sign and pick? You keep on asking me. Why are you disturbing me with phone calls? Why are you calling me, calling me all the time? That's how salvation is. You have already been told, go and pick. You pick by faith. You receive by faith. And you keep on crying, Jesus, save me. Jesus, please, please come into my heart. Please, please do this. No, he won't do it. He has already kept it. It's there. Go and pick. That's how salvation is like. I want to tell you about these people who really misunderstand the gospel i'll just give a few a few tips on how people must misunderstand the gospel as i as i wind up people think that it's by works it's not by all right The, mis the, so the, the various misunderstandings. Many people think that salvation is by works. It's not by works. All right? Like we see here, Cain. Cain. His offering was rejected because he brought to God his own works. He did not go through the blood. He did not use the blood as God has always demanded. He thought, because I've given my works, then I am better off. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Ephesians. Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 2, uh -huh. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it tells us, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. Salvation is not of works. It's not by anything that you do. It's not by anything that you do. Titus 3.5. Titus 3.5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Not by works. So those who think that it's something that you do, you're lying to yourself. It's not by works. Number two. It's not by church. Not by church. This one I want to address so many false religions who are sending people to hell with their stories. You think, uh, I remember someone called me after seeing me posting about different things about the Bible and all that. They, wow, I like what you're doing. I, I like what you're preaching. Which church do you go? I'm like, okay, but I don't think... It's all about the church. It's about believing in the Bible. A church, you see, people want to associate you with a certain church. Now, imagine if Jesus joined a church when he came here on earth to preach. And he say, oh, wow, I'm uh, of synagogue, you know, Samaria synagogue. I'm a member there. Could we have salvation now? No. It will be, people will really raise that church the way they raise uh, the Catholic church so much. It's like, they, they even call the Pope that is the vicar of Christ in place of God here on earth. How can you be in place of God? How? That's how much you raise a church. All right. I also saw another thing. They were saying that <laughs> they were saying that in Catholic, the, the priests are, the, are, are, are married to the church. You see, like, it's like the priest is marrying the church. So who marries the church? It's Jesus Christ. So you try to say, now I am marrying the church. Now I am the God. You see, the church. 
You think that you're, you're saved by believing in a church? I'm not against Catholics. I'm only against their doctrines. They are so weird. And two billion people are in that church, lost and going to hell, thinking that they serve themselves and they, they were saved by their church. Acts 4.12. Let's see there. Acts 4.12. Acts 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no, no other name under heaven given among men by where we might be saved, by which we might be saved. There is no other way that you can be saved apart from Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who saves. You're not saved by a church, by being a member of a certain church. You're not saved by all those things. They don't even add an inch to your salvation. Again, you're not saved by baptism in water. Not by baptism. Not by baptism in water. What is the work of baptism? Why are people baptized? You have to ask yourself that. You're baptized so that you can receive the Holy Spirit. In the early days, uh, people were baptized so that they can get the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in water. But when Jesus came, he changed the whole aspect of baptism from water to faith. You can even read in Colossians. Uh, Colossians, 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 Colossians. Where, where is it? Let me show you. It changed from being uh, put in water. To another thing, Colossians 2, 12. Buried with him in baptism. Buried with who? Jesus Christ. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein you are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. So if you're buried in faith with Jesus and raised with him in faith, the Bible says in faith, then what are you doing in water? What are you doing in water? If the Bible has said you're buried with him in faith, what are you doing in water? Like I always say, you will go to hell wet with your water. The only way you can be saved is not by water. Water cannot cleanse any of your sins. It is by faith. By faith, all right? By faith. You see, let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 18. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 18. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 uh, to 18. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, I was already far. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 18. Apostle Paul says something here. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So Paul is saying, I, I, I was not sent to come and baptize people. The whole aspect of being baptized is already sorted by Jesus Christ because the reason we need baptism is to receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. All right? Before, Peter in uh, Acts 2.28, if I'm not wrong, he said, he was asked, so what must we do to, must we do to be saved? He, was, he, he said, repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, you can only get him through being baptized in water. But when Jesus, uh, when the whole transition happened, now salvation became by faith, not by water. And like I've shown you, baptism now is by faith. And even Paul says, I did not come to baptize. I came to preach the gospel. So how do you get the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 1.13, in whom also you trusted after you re after, in whom also you uh, in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth you are sealed with the holy spirit of promise so if you have been sealed with the holy spirit of promise you are already sealed with the holy spirit immediately you believe oh, where is the word believe immediately you believe when you believe you are sealed and given the holy spirit then why do you need another holy spirit from water how does water give you another Holy Spirit? It's so ridiculous. Believing is the only thing. It's, you cannot be saved by baptism in water. That cannot save you. It's not by what you say. All right? It's not by what you say. Not by what you say. 
what you say. That is a mouth. You see, people think that I, I say something. That is a sinner's prayer. You're not saved by saying the sinner's prayer. You're not saved by what you say with your mouth. Your mouth, all right? Your mouth cannot save you. You cannot be able to be saved. You see, there are people who go to Romans uh, 10, 9 to 10. Let's go there. Romans 10, 9 to 10. And they say, this is how we are saved. You have to say something. Romans 10, 9 to 10. It says that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That if you shall confess with thy mouth, confess with the mouth, then they say, wow, the mouth is involved. Now, let me tell you something. Read verse 10. For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, I want to tell you one thing. Believing the people who say, because I have said something by my mouth, I'm saved, then they are lying to you. What if you say something by your mouth and you don't believe in your heart? You just, you're told, just come here. You don't want to go to hell. Yeah, no, I don't want to go to hell. Come here. Just repeat after me. Oh, Lord, please save me. And then you go. You've not even heard the gospel. You don't even understand what the gospel. Are you saved? No, you're not. You only repeated something with your mouth, but your heart is not there. The, Jesus said, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You have to believe from your heart. It's not by mouth. Actually, let me show you. 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 13. This is Paul saying, We, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, listen, listen to what Paul is saying, I believed, and therefore I, uh, and therefore have I spoken. So Paul is saying, I believed, I believed, I believed, and therefore, I have done what? I have spoken. When you believe, you have spoken. And listen there. We also believe and therefore speak. So when you believe, you have spoken. When you believe, you have spoken. God does not look on the lip service. He looks in the heart. You can just say it with your mouth, but then you're not saved. The only way is by believing. When you believe, you have spoken. You have spoken. Hmm? That is really, really important. The, uh, l l let me show you Luke, Luke 16, 16. There's also another verse which people really use here so much, and they try to use it to condemn people. Luke 16, 16. And uh, let me address that quite quickly. Luke 16, 16. Many people say, ah, see this one, see this one. Yeah. Uh, is it Luke? Okay, where is that verse? Is it Luke or John? Uh, sorry, I think I've, I've lost that one. But uh, let, me, let me just uh, paraphrase. It, 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 there's this verse which says, uh, he, that believes and is he that believes and baptized is saved, but he that believes not is damned. Uh, I don't remember exactly where the verse is, uh, either in Luke or John. I, I don't know exactly, but, but uh, I know the verse. Now, people say, you see, is believing and being baptized. But you don't check the other way around. The Bible also says, but he that believes not is damned. So it does not say he that believes not and is not baptized. Why? Because once you believe, you are baptized automatically because the Holy Spirit comes inside you immediately. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to be, uh, the purpose of baptism is to get the Holy Spirit. So once you believe, the Holy Spirit comes in. So it is a double portion. You believe then the Holy Spirit comes in. But you don't believe, you're damned. So it doesn't say if you don't believe and you're not baptized. You see, you see the difference? So finally, let me ask you, do you believe the gospel? Have you heard the gospel? Do you believe the gospel? Because the gospel is the only one which can be able to save you. Do you believe the gospel? Do you even know what is the gospel? Many people don't, have never even heard what the gospel is. And that's why. It's very important to say what the gospel is. I'm not talking about the gospels. I'm talking about the gospel. The gospels are uh, Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke. 
No, those are the Gospels. I'm talking about the Gospel. Here's the Gospel. All right, the Gospel. Here is the Gospel. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That is the Gospel. And I like to tell you what the Gospel entails before I finish, because I always like to give the gospel, because there might be somebody else who has not heard, this, heard maybe these messages any other time, and maybe will want to be saved, and this is the only way you can be saved. Once you believe this, then you're saved. The gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, so it must be preached to you, which also you have received, so you have to receive the gospel, and wherein you stand, you have to stand in the gospel, all right? By which you are also, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. You have to keep in memory the gospel. Keep it in memory, okay? Now, what is that that you have to keep in memory? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Paul says, I don't give you my own gospel. I give you the gospel which I also received, okay? How? How? This is a very important word. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So the gospel is how that Christ died, Christ died for our sins. Very important, for our sins. He did not die for any other thing. For our sins. Was buried. Was buried. Rose again. According to the scriptures. So this is the gospel. How that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. If you believe in this, then you're saved. Immediately, you don't even need to say a word. You're saved. If you believe this, because like I've told you, you believe and you have spoken. Once you believe this, you're spoken. Don't just stay like that, please. The time is moving, and uh, I know Jesus is about to come. And any time you, you, you may, I was talking to somebody and telling them, right now we may be doing these videos and telling people this is how you can be saved. And maybe one or two or ten or one thousand people watch. But a time is going to come when the rapture happens and everybody is gone. Now this is the time that these messages, for those who have never wanted to get serious about salvation, they'll be running to here. And remember, after the rapture happens, you'll not be saved by this gospel. You'll be saved by doing faith and works. What is the work? You don't take the mark of the beast. So this message will not help you if the rapture has happened. But if it has not happened, this is what saves you. Please, get saved. Don't just stay there and uh, say you don't know or maybe you've never heard the gospel. Just help yourself by understanding the gospel and I believe you'll be saved. God bless you and have a great time. You can always share this one to other people who don't know and that they can be saved as well. God bless you. Thank you.